how we came up with this topic is we're, we were thinking about it and figuring out, do we talk about compliance? Do we talk about TRID challenges? And, and we really want to get down to the, the, the root cause of why you would actually pick one solution over the other. Um, and so we want to do comparisons around what your options are out there um, and, and really try to figure out um, you know, what the differentiations are between those different offerings. So the first one is you, know, you have an option to go with the SaaS processing. So you know, there are cloud-based services and um, they can do capture type of processing, they can do storage processing, retrieval, um, and um, stacking and sorting, things of that nature. Um, you know, one of the big um, difficulties when it comes to SaaS processing is it's expensive. Um, you can pay 15 to $30 per package per loan uh, to process these for capture. Um, you know, that becomes a lot of money. You know, if you, I know, you know when we talk to people and have solutions that are doing 1000 a week, um, and, and I think that you can do some simple math in your head and that, that, that goes into a lot of money. Um, and so we, we can really, um, it, it costs even more money to then be able to store those, those process packages um, on a per month basis. And so this can really rack up if you're doing quite a bit of volume. Um, the other thing around SaaS processing is the, the service level agreement. Um, so one of the biggest differentiators for a lot of service pro um, providers uh, whether it be underwriting, QA, um, insurance, um, is the service level. Uh, some processing decisions are not based on, um, they're based on hours, not, not days or weeks. Um, and that's not interpreting just capture. Um, it's capture and workflow and making decisions and, and, make, and doing this within hours. And that's, if this is your differentiation, you want to be able to control that process um, and how long any particular piece of the process takes. Um, the capture needs to be fast um, and the rest of the process through um, uh, and, and give more um, information to the rest of the process to flow quickly um, around figuring out what documents that you're trying to find um, and information based inside of those documents and that way you can make decisions quickly. Um, the other one is around security. Um, so, you know, this is pretty basic, but many security teams trying to keep information, especially documents with personal identifiable information really secure, you know, close to their chest. Um, and when it comes to um, sending it to a, 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 a third party, then there's transfers. And of course, you can make those um, secure. And so I'm not here to just talk doom and gloom. Um, but one of the things that I've really noticed when it comes to SaaS offerings is um, even though a um, particular customer may want to actually put a solution in place, the security team gets involved, and usually it takes a long runway um, to be able to, to, to get that solution into place. Um, so those are the main things, and there's other parts around SaaS processing. There's a lot of differentiation, like a, you know this $15 to $30. Those are different providers that are doing um, this, this sort of processing. Um, and of course, they have different services, but I, I think that these three topics are the, the main topics that I'd like to cover when it comes to differentiation. And we'll go into our solution um, that we're proposing and, and how these compare against those. Um, the challenges with manual processing, and there are way more people than, than, than you would think that are still doing manual processing, um, is, is just how many errors it can be. You know, like people are, um, people can make mistakes. And so whether that actually be distraction, stress, exhaustion, they have a tendency of making those mistakes. And they can misclassify documents, lose documents, and worse off, fat fingering incorrect information, and the quality goes down with those with, with people. So people will always be part of the process, but they should be dealing with exceptions and they should be dealing with decisions. And and the majority of the capture process can be automated. Um, so that takes away a lot of those that those error prone activities that are going on with the processing of mortgage documents. Um, the other part, again, is around security. Um, uh, giving more people the view of, of this information, and a lot of people are doing this um, offshore, um, have to show this information that has this PII. And, and this is not a scare tactic, but it's just factual. And when it comes to that security review and figuring out whether you're using people that are internal or how that systems are going to be in such a way that they don't get the actual documents, um, it, it just is a laborious process um, when it comes to manual processing. 
And, and I think the biggest problem with manual processing, uh, uh, along with the, the errors that, that are there and the, the quality, um, it's just difficult to scale. I mean, everybody here is here to grow their business. Um, they have anticipated volume spikes. And ramping up people um, is difficult. Um, you know, ramping down people is real sad. Um, so it, it's just a hard, hard solution to, to, to scale for the way that the mortgage processing works. Everything's dictated by what, um, what the rates are and uh, what time of year it is and what part of the month it is. Um, and so that scalability needs to be there. And so now, how can you actually differentiate that with what you're trying to do? So what we propose is using a tool called Episoft, um, as well as some BPM tools, possibly, um, and an accelerator that we created called ACE, which is the um, uh, Advanced Closing Extraction. Um, and the reason that we're proposing this, it gives you more of that control, um, namely because of that first item that I was talking about, cost. It's less expensive. So what can I do with more money? You know, and of course, you can actually make that more profitable, make that for your shareholders. Um, you know, everybody makes ha uh, is happier. But you can also use that for marketing outreach, customer service, mobility solutions, enhancing your solutions. So there's a slew of ways that you can actually use this framework of Episoft as well as our accelerator within mortgage um, to be able to get a solution up uh, very quickly to process your documents. Um, so let's compare them against the things that we were talking about when it comes to SaaS offerings as well as um, manual processing. You can scale the, uh, the system in such a way that you can, um, that you can have your controlled SLA. So, um, and that's always changing, and you can scale that system appropriately. So you know, some people will move from a four-hour SLA to a two-hour SLA. Again, very hard to do with people, um, very hard to do or um, with, with a SAS unless they are giving you that and they are in control of that. If you have control of it, then you're able to control, um, then you're able to set what you're actually able to give your customers. Um, you know, along with that is the scalability. So you can actually scale it to have handle more volume, to handle spikes, um, to handle, uh, you know, that SLA requirement. Um, it it get, puts you at the uh, um, the driver's seat of being able to control how you actually do that um, and how you grow the system, um, how you're hopefully growing your business. The security um, you you can you can put it behind your firewall. You can control the documents. You can put it alongside of where you actually have your document management system or LOS system. Um, you can make calls out directly to the FSOP system from your repository or LOS system. So there's a slew of ways that you can actually um, tighten down your security and get through your security review a lot quicker. And then, of course, you can deploy as you want to. Um, so it's available within Linux. It's available within Windows. Um, there's a slew of databases that are supported. Um, you can put it on premise or in the cloud. It could be redeploys as your business change. You know, there's a lot of people that are reinventing themselves within the cloud. And this gives you the capability and that flexibility to move as you like to move. So what is this accelerator? So what we did is we took Episoft and we started finding a lot of commonalities, of course, as you very much aware. The problems that you see might change quite a bit, the documents you care about, the information on those documents that are care about that you can automate the process. Um, so what we started doing was saying, hey, you know, somebody doesn't have to actually start from the very beginning of a solution. They uh, a lot of capture solutions or frameworks. Um, let's go ahead and take it so they um, will be at that first milestone. Um, that way they can get their, their solutions into place a lot more quickly. Um, so it has about 170 pre-trained. A lot of those have uh, fields that are um, extracting automatically. And of course, since this is a framework and based on a framework, then we have the capability of customizing it exactly how you would like it. So who can it be used by? Um, everybody. Um, so whether you're actually processing single documents at the very um, very start of the intake application process, um, having to validate that they give you the right documentation, and and when I say this, you know, like a lot of people are, are doing this, and this is not you know um, this, is, this is not groundbreaking, but being able to automatically without a person receiving a document saying this is the wrong W-2, which you're going to be seeing within the demonstration, um, or being able to do the needle in a haystack type of problems. 
I, I care about 12 documents because those are the ones that, um, that actually let me make decisions. Um, this gives you the capability of automating that. Um, so whether you're a retailer or a service provider, investor, QA, and of course other ones, um, that you can actually use this solution um, to be able to accelerate your processing. And with that, I'm going to change, um, turn it over to John for a demonstration. Hold on one sec. All right. Uh, so what we'll see here is is kind of a two part. Uh, demonstration. Um, the first will be looking at the loan application process. Uh, the second will be looking at processing a closing package uh, towards the kind of middle or end of the uh, overall uh, mortgage process. Um, so what we'll see here, as I mentioned, is the application process. So this will be the, the workflow associated with gathering the correct information from the applicant. Uh, we are going to be driving this demo kind of as an agent, someone that is working with the applicant to make sure that they have all of the information that's necessary. Uh, we're going to start out by collecting some documents from that applicant. That's going to consist of a W-2 and a 1003. Um, we are going to get a lot of information about these documents without doing any sort of indexing manually, categorization manually. We're going to leverage the ACE in order to, to get all of this information. Uh, so we'll start off this demo uh, from the Outlook uh, client. So we've received an email from our applicant, and that email has some attachments. Uh, we have a W-2 and we have a 1003. Uh, we want to get this information into our repository. So on the right, we have a view into the repository. Uh, we want to create a new folder for our applicant. Obviously, this is a very kind of manual look at how to do this. In reality, this entire process can also be automated. Uh, we can leverage other systems to notify Alfresco that a new application has begun, um, and that can automatically create this folder structure, um, can automatically do, do many of the things that we're going to step through a little bit manually here. Um, we also can obviously skip the step of having an individual pushing the content into the repository. Uh, this same thing can be done by monitoring an email inbox and being intelligent with the information that's gathering. Uh, so here we are creating a folder for John Doe, that is our applicant, and then we just want to get his information into the system. Uh, with that, it's going to pull it into the system and it's going to uh, automatically kick off a workflow. And that workflow is the, the process, the onboarding process that, we, uh, that we're going to look at here. Uh, so that process consists of basically gathering documents. In our case here, simplified. We're just going to get a W-2 and a 1003. Uh, we're going to validate those documents. So we're going to make sure, first of all, that we have the documents we need. And then second of all, that the information from those is accurate um, and is, is correct. And so this is just a metaphor, and I want to make that you know really pronounced that this is a workflow. So we're using um, activity the business process services from Alfresco to drive this process. Um, and what we're using with with the Episoft and, and the Ace product is we're making calls out. And see, so this is an embeddable capture solution. Um, so w you can use it very traditionally, where you're um, monitoring folders and files and, and emails and process those and then push them to an LOS system or VPM system like you're seeing now. In this case, what we're doing is, is an embeddable capture. So if you're trying to do it through a portal, through VPM, through your LOS, um, you can make these remote calls out much like you're seeing right now within this, uh, this particular um, business process. Okay. All right. So once we have gathered all the documents we need, once we've validated that package of documents, we can decide if it's valid or not. Um, in our scenario here, we're actually going to take a, kind of an exception path. So we've gathered this information, but something is not correct. So we've sent an email update, and now we are waiting again for the, the customer, the applicant, to provide that information. So the agent would be notified uh, of missing information, um, and the, they can then reach out to the applicant for that relevant information. Uh, so we'll switch over to the, uh, the email client again, and we see that we are notified 
hey, we are missing some information based on what was provided. We've determined that the 10, the, the W-2 um, is from 2013, and we're expecting that uh, 2016 W-2. Again, all of this is done automatically by the system because we're using Capture in order to classify um, and extract the information. Uh, so we're just going to double check here, and it looks like, yes, the W-2 that was provided by that applicant is, in fact, from 2013, and that's not going to work for this loan application. So we can reach back out to our applicant uh, for an updated W-2. Uh, keep in mind, this could also be directly to that applicant. Uh, we have this kind of go-between here. Um, of the, the agent doing this work, but this could be exposed in a portal, this could be exposed in, in many other ways to notify the applicant directly. So now we have gotten a new W-2 from our applicant, and we again just want to be able to pull it into the system. Uh, we see that it is the 2016 W-2, uh, that's what we need, so we can go ahead and again drag and drop it into that applicant's folder. Um, that will then automatically advance that workflow uh, so that we can continue on this process. So again, we have gotten that new updated document from our, uh, from our applicant. Uh, we have revalidated that package. Now it passes all of our validation and we are at a step for review of that application. And this just shows the power of something like the Alfresco Business Process Services, also known as Activity. Um, and, and, and being able to um, use something like that and do integrations with things like Episoft, like things like LOS. Of course, we, we made this a very simplistic metaphor uh, for what this, this, this process is. You know, we would have different documents that we were, had required. Of course, like, like uh, John said, we, um, we would most likely have automation. So this email would have went directly. It wouldn't have actually went to a, um, a, an agent um, to be able to process this. But we just wanted to show the flexibility as well as the power of um, BPM plus um, FSOF for capture. Okay. So at this point, we are at a human step where we want someone to come in and review these documents. Obviously, we've done a lot of automatic processing here, um, but some amount of manual processing uh, may be required in your process. Uh, so here we have our application. Uh, we have this task in our inbox, we have the application, and then we have a couple pieces of metadata on the right that have been pulled automatically. Um, from this document, obviously there's much more information that could be pulled and displayed here. This is really just a metaphor. Um, likewise, with the W-2, we're pulling just simple information, the, the box one uh, info, uh, wages, and then the year again that was used to validate in the first place. We see this one is 2016. Um, we can go ahead and approve that. Uh, we also have an option to reject that, um, and that can, hand, that can go into a separate exception handling queue uh, with notes uh, to, to be processed. Uh, so that kind of ends this, this overall process. Um, we do have the ability from the, the UI to you know, go in and look at these documents again. Maybe the applicant has a question about their application. We can very easily come into the system, uh, see the associated metadata, see the document. Um, and then we also have information about the overall package, so the application status. Um, here we see it's approved, so we're waiting on possibly underwriting um, or other steps within the mortgage process. Um, so, again, this is really an example of how this process can be done. Um, you know, we could do this, this storage of content within a system like this. Uh, we can do the storage of content within an LOS, but still leveraging all of the, uh, the, the automation capabilities of, of FSOF, this capture tool, to provide the information. Um, so, now if we move forward a bit, uh, we'll take a look at the closing package. So once we've, once we've gone through the application process, um, obviously we want to generate a closing package, we want to get it signed, we want to be able to process all that back as it comes through. Um, this could be a retailer, this could be quality assurance, this could be um, information governance, any of those needs um, that have a, a use for taking an entire 
package and and parsing it out to its individual documents, doing the separation, and and being intelligent about how that all works. Um, so what you're seeing here is the FSOPT interface. Um, the the reason we see this interface is when we have a package that has come through the system and and requires some sort of human intervention. Uh, we see some red documents and red fields. Uh, in our case here, we have set some thresholds sort of impossibly high in order to force this, this set of documents into this state. So we ingest this content in, in any way, whether it's email, fax, scan from another repository, uh, any other way that we can get it into the system. We do the classification and separation, we do the extraction, and then we see it in this view. So on the left, we have the component documents that make up the closing package, things like loan estimate, closing disclosures, uh, closing instructions, worksheets. In the center, we have the metadata that we've extracted automatically. And on the right, we have a preview of the document itself. Um, from this, you can see that we're doing quite a bit of extraction from this loan estimate. Uh, this is the kind of simple extraction uh, where we're pulling information. We also have the ability to pull all of the tabular data from these documents as well. Uh, so we have our information being extracted here to be used. Um, one thing that's very important here is that it's not a one size fits all. Not everyone wants to see all of this information. Not everyone wants to see all of these document types. So we work with your organization in order to understand, hey, what information do you truly need? Too much information can be as bad as not enough information. So we really want to get the right sizing for all of this. Um, so here we're just kind of stepping through some of the extracted information um, from something like the loan application. Uh, we can really just walk through all of this information. Again, this being extracted automatically, removing the need for keying in of this information. Um, we're scrolling through all of these document types. As Pat mentioned early, earlier, we have about 170 trained document types within uh, the ACE offering. Um, as we click through these, again, we're going to see this extraction being done on the, the associated documents, making sure we have the metadata that we need. Uh, once we have gone through all of this, done all of the validation, um, you know, made it so that we don't have red boxes anymore, um, we are going to push to whatever system makes sense for your organization. Now, that could be a home-built solution that, that you've created on your own. That could be a system like Alfresco. It could just be sending the information to an LOS um, or interfacing with an LOS in order to do uh, additional validation, making sure that what is coming in is the expected information. Uh, and so that's really an end-to-end -end look from from application process to, to closing of how this system uh, could, could help streamline and automate your business. Thank you, John. Um, so, you know, I think that that really shows the power of it. So whether you're dealing with single documents that are coming in and you want to automate that process and extract information off of it, um, or if you are uh, processing entire packages and then, of course, trailing documents, we can be used for solutions like that. Um, so, you know, that we thought about other, um, other benefits of, of a solution um, like customer SAT and risk management, but we think that that's really a topic to itself for another webinar, another day. And we want to really keep this around the benefits of, of Episoft and ACE, um, as well as um, being able to, if you don't have something like BPM or a repository that has true records management, um, they can really be integrated. These are integratable tools, and we're going to work with you um, to integrate it to your um, system of record or your um, business process solution. So what, what is that complete solution? Um, you know, again, we're going to work with you. So whether that be um, just a piece like Episoft, um, using the repository technologies, BPM technologies, or integrating to your LOS, um, this is really an embeddable capture solution that we can work with you to make automation a possibility. Why Zia then? Um, now that you've seen the solution, of course, you know, we're the ones that created ACE, um, uh, but you know, why, who are we? So we've been around for a while. Um, so we've been around different uh, um, technologies when it comes to capture, when it comes to um, document management solutions. Uh, we really believe that we're, um, we create our solutions on best of breed solutions. 
And um, you know, our mission is to provide. Um, we just do we do content solutions. That's that's all we do, and integration solutions on top of that. Uh, we know these these products very well. Um, we've been Platinum System Integrator um, for both technologies and for many years. Um, and we have, uh, which is really important, a 95% retention rate. Um, you know, whether you know it or not, the many content solutions become shelfware very quickly, and ours don't. And we're we're good, and we've been good for a long time. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Um, so, you know, since basically we started with Alfresco, I think in 2009. Uh, with Episoft in 2010, um, you know, we've gotten acclaim and, and we've produced things and, and worked with them um, basically since we started working with the technologies. So what is your call to action? Um, your call to action is, hey, we have a lot of case studies. Um, so if you want to talk or, or see where our mortgage case studies are and how people got, um, you know, 700% uh, more efficiency um, within the mortgage, um, it, other things around, you know, dollar amounts and um, automation and, and, you know, what solutions they had before and turned into um, using technologies like we've described today, um, go to our website. And then, of course, um, for those mortgage people that are on the phone, um, it turns out that uh, we're based in Boulder and uh, um, turns out that in our backyard is going to be the MBA Expo in October. So let's figure out how we meet up. And so if that be for dinner, if that be for lunch, if that be stopping by the booth, um, let's figure it out ahead of time. I know that uh, um, these are all have scheduled meetings and everybody has a busy schedule once they actually get to the MBA show. So let's figure it out. And on that note, are there any questions? Yeah, thanks, Pat and John. Uh, if you do have a question, please type it into the chat window and we will answer it. So it looks like we do have our first question. Uh, is this a component solution? Let's say we only want capture or BPM, uh, basically trying to fit this into our existing system. Um, so, so the answer is a great question, and the answer is yes. I mean, we're systems integrators. Um, it, the, these integrate well together, and they can be integrated in yours. So, you know, as an example, um, we've had a wholesaler that used this technology um, to be able to integrate it to their portal. So they're able to instantaneously be able to um, tell somebody, you know, what their document type is and if they're missing other document types through their portal solution. Um, other people are using this more traditional, um, you know, we have uh, mortgage insurers that are using it for being able to process entire packages and, of course, trailing documents depending on um, what they found inside of the packet um, to be able to automate that process. And uh, it has a, from all of our mortgage solutions, it goes from people that have something that they built themselves um, to products like Alfresco and, and um, Activity to be able to automate that process. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions that we have and all the time that we have for today. So just a reminder to everybody that they will get an email tomorrow with this recording, our slides and additional resources. And thank you to Pat and John for your presentation. Thank you to everybody for listening. Uh, we hope you learned something new and we hope you have a great day.